Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, how Stephanie. Are you? Hi, Stephanie. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? What's your name? I'm Nelson. Okay. Hi, Nelson. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Um, this is my first time doing this, but I heard that you can help me with my homework. Yes. Yes, I can. So with these virtual sessions, if you had a problem with your homework, uh, you just describe to me the problem, and I'll help you do it on the board. And you okay, should be perfect. able to see what I'm writing. So it's pretty interactive. Let me know if at any time you can't see something that I write, and I'll be sure to move it over. So it's okay. within your line of vision. <laughs> well, I'm logged into the IMAF, IMAFAS. Okay. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm in section 2.1, and it's problem number 11 that I'm stuck on. Okay, can you see what I just finished writing? 2.1 number 11? I see the number 11, yeah. But you don't see 2.1? No. Okay. I'll be sure to fix that. Sometimes I can't write on all of this board, but we're still figuring out where I can write. Gotcha. Is that better? Yes, I see that. All right, perfect. So can you describe to me the problem? Sure. Um, it says, determine if each ordered pair is a solution to the given system. Okay. If so, type Y in the answer box. If not, type N. All right, perfect. So if you can give me the equations. Sure, um, there's two of them. The top one mm -hmm. says x plus y equals negative 6. Okay. And the second one is 3x minus y equals negative 2. Mm-hmm. And now your and ordered pairs, right? Two ordered pairs, yeah, there's two of them. The first one on the left says... says I believe you cut off again I'm checking this time I'm not muted but it sounded like you said says and then you slowly died off so I'm not sure I believe it was negative 2, negative 4 <laughs> was one of them. Was it negative 2, negative 4? And then your other ordered pair. Oh, I heard something. Oh, no. We're having mic issues, I think. It's not me. Can you hear me? I would start working on the problem. I can do the problem actually with this ordered pair. So if we work on one ordered pair at a time to see if this is a solution to the system, what we're going to do is first label that this is negative 2, it's an x, and this is my y. Oh, I think I heard you. Hello? Oh, I guess not. It's 0, negative 6. 0, negative 6. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Sorry, I'm having a little problem with my microphone here at home. Oh, okay, it's no worries. I wasn't sure if it was my side or your side. But were you able to hear me the entire time? Yes, yes. Okay, all right, no worries. So what I might do is sometimes I would try to continue the problem at least a little bit until you get back to me in case anyone else is watching. I'll try not to go too fast, and I'll pause and wait until you can regain connectivity, okay. and I wouldn't mind going over there with you. Thank so, you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for sticking around. So for what we're going to do is we're going to first check to see if this ordered pair is a solution to the system. And by doing that, we're going to plug them into both equations to see if it's true. So we're going to first test it with negative 2, negative 4. And okay. we just plug it in. So I labeled it. So here we're going to plug it in. Negative 2 plus negative 4 equals negative 6. Okay. 
And so okay. this plus minus can actually be negative two minus four. Adding a negative is the same thing as subtraction, equals negative six. When we simplify, negative two minus four is negative six. So that's negative six equals negative six. Yes, that's true. Yep, it is true. So it's true, but remember, we still have to test this ordered pair with the second equation. Just because it's true in the first, it doesn't mean that it's a solution to the system. It has to be true for both equations. Do I do that with the second ordered pair or the yep. same first one? You do it with the second one. The second, oh no, we will do the second ordered pair, but we're doing just the first ordered pair. Okay, that makes sense. Because they want an answer for both. They want, is this a solution, and is this a solution, right? Oh, gotcha. That's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of work, but it's not. it won't be too bad. I'll do, I'm right here, and we'll do it together. Well, I actually started doing it with the other equation, but we're going to do it with, uh, oh, yes. Actually, no. You see what, so you see what we're doing here? We're doing with mm -hmm. this equation mm -hmm. and just plugging in the same points. So 3 times x, remember our x is negative 2 minus two. the y, so that's negative 4, four. equals negative, negative four. 2. Oh, minus I would have forgotten. Negative four. Yeah, <laughs> that actually happened to me a little earlier with a, a similar problem. <laughs> so <laughs> neg 3 times negative 2 would be then negative 6. Negative six. Minus negative becomes a positive, plus so that's four. plus 4. Yep. It's sometimes a little extra work just writing this, the minus, and then when you're substituting to do parentheses, but it really helps you not forget in case some people might overlook it and they think, oh, I'm plugging it in here, but you overlook a negative and you would have mm -hmm. written negative six minus four. So be careful on that. Okay. It's a little extra work, but it'll, it'll be worth it for you to get the right answer. Negative six plus four now is negative two. Negative two mm -hmm. equals negative two. Yep. And so now this is true. You see how now they're true for both equations? Mm -hmm. So that means that this ordered pair is a yes. It is a solution to the system of equations. And a system of equations simply means that there's more than one equation. So you see how we have two equations to work with? Mm -hmm. That's what system of equations means, more than one equation. OK. okay. So now what do I do with the second ordered pair? Now with the second ordered pair, we do the same thing we did with the first. Plug it into both of these equations and see if they are both true. They both have to be true for it to be a yes. Make sense? Yes, that makes sense. So we'll try it for, with the first equation and the second so ordered pair. So, zero. Mm-hmm, zero. Uh, plus negative six. Yep. Equals negative six. Mm-hmm. Can you still see this, by the way? Yes. Okay, and now this becomes negative 6 equals yes, negative six. 6. So that's true. That is true. And now when we're testing it with the second <laughs> equation, still with the second ordered pair, so 3 times 0 minus negative 6, minus negative six. equals negative 2. And anything multiplied by 0 is just 0. It's all 0. Negative minus is a plus. Positive. Mm-hmm. Positive six equals negative two. Yep. Is that true? Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't equal. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not true. So you see how we have one equation when we plug mm -hmm. it in, it's true, and the other one it doesn't. Overall, yeah. it's a no. It has to be true for both. If even one of them both. is wrong, it's just uh -huh. just type in no right away. No. Just no. Yep. So this is a solution, but the second ordered pair is not. First ordered pair is a solution to the system. The second is not. All it so is is just plugging in. In the system. Come again? It says enter your letter, your answer as letters. Oh, as letters. Exactly. So, right. So they just want to, if it's a yes, then just type in Y. And okay. just no. Is that what they, the, they said, I think? Yeah, oh, I see. There's two blanks. Okay, it was confusing at first, but I can see the okay. first blank is the first ordered pair. The second blank box is the second ordered pair. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Hey, Stephanie, yeah. I have another question. Okay, yeah, sure, Nelson, go ahead. So this question is from a section, um, and all the other questions are the same. Okay. It's uh, section 2.3.
Uh, right. Problem number one, actually. All right, no worries. And uh, can you describe to me the problem and the section title, if you yeah. can? Sure. Um, it's the title is Solve Systems of Linear Equations by Elimination or Addition. Okay. All right, so it says solve the system of equations by the addition elimination method. No type in the zero zero for infinity many solutions I, mm -hmm. and any for no solution. Okay. It gives me two equations. Okay. And it says enter your answers in the form of x, y, where okay. x equals blank and y equals blank. Mm-hmm. Um, I can give you the two equations. Yes, please. The first one is 2x mm -hmm. plus 3y equals negative 1. And then the other question, I mean the other equation, I'm sorry, is negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 2. Okay. Can you see how I wrote 2.3 number 1 over here? Absolutely. Okay, perfect. So... When it comes to the elimination and addition method, you might see it one way or the other. It both means the same thing. We're trying to eliminate the variables, and we're going to eliminate one variable at a time. So the whole point of this is to check, do we want to eliminate Xs or Ys? And what we right, want to check, right, we're going to look and compare. So we see this is a 2x and this is a negative 2x. We're going to end up adding all of these down, your x's, your y's, and then the constants over here. You see how they have the coefficients, so the numbers in front of the variables, 2 and negative 2? You want to have the same value but opposite signs. So this is a positive 2, this is a negative 2. Positive 2x, negative 2x. That means that when you add them, what's going to happen? They're going to cross out right? So cross the x's out? Yes, because they're already set up that way. You have a positive 2x and a negative 2x. So when we're adding these down, we have zero x's left down here. And in this case, you don't case, have to. You can, but I wrote it down just so you can see what would happen. You can just write down zero if it's a lot easier. So okay. just a regular zero, and we're going to end up adding all of these down. So x's cancel out. What about the y's? When we're Remember when we're adding, we're only adding the numbers in the front, and we keep the variable the same. So 3y minus 2y is? 1y. Yes, and it's a positive 1y. So positive 1y. Plus y. And you could choose to write the 1 in the front if you want to or not. Yeah. It's up yeah. to you. And then same thing, when we're adding the coefficients, negative 1 plus negative 2, two negatives added together make a bigger negative number, so it's negative 3. Negative 3. Yes. And when we simplify this, it'll be y equals negative 3. Does this make sense so far? Yeah. Keep in uh, mind that whenever we're doing elimination or substitution, you're equations should be set up so that it's in this form ax plus by equals c and you want one equation to be right on top of the other you're always going to be given two equations and you want to make sure it's in this form your x's and, and y's are on one side equaling a number which is your constant a b and c are, are numbers does that make sense that makes sense okay so we, when we solve for y, once you have one variable equaling a number, you can plug that in to either equation to get x, whichever one you want. Either equation, I'll even label it equation 1 or equation 2. Which one do you feel like plugging it into? Um, let's do equation 1. Okay, so if, you, if we plug y into equation 1, you'll still get the same answer regardless of which equation you pick we'll have 2x plus 3. And because y is equal to negative 3, we're going to substitute that. So 3 times negative 3 equals negative 1. So are you with me so far? Yeah. OK. When we simplify, it'll be 2x plus 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. 
So plus a negative is just minus if you want to just erase minus. that plus. That plus, mm -hmm. And then it's equal to negative 1. So when we're solving for x, we want to add 9 to both sides. 2x is equal to negative 1 plus 9 would be negative 8. Oh, oops, sorry, positive 8. And then we're going to divide by 2 to both sides. So x would be equal to 4. And if you want me to write down what we did here, this is we added 9 here, added 9 here, and divided by 2 to both sides. This is a positive 8, by the way. I'll just erase the, that. So does this make sense? Yes. So x equals... Uh, four. Mm -hmm. Negative four. Negative four? Or is it positive, positive four? four sorry. Yes. X equals positive four, and then Y equals negative three. So yes. I entered that into I'm at the yes, right? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. I, I was confused at first because I thought it was like X equals zero because we determined up there is not zero, but it's not really that. You have to plug it in to get X. Yes, yes, Got you need it. to plug it okay. in once, and you could have done it where you solved for the Y's first. It doesn't matter whether you solve for Y first or for X first, just make sure that whichever variable you choose to solve for, plug it in to get the 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 answer for the other variable. Gotcha. A yeah, value for the other variable. It looked like the other problems were very similar. Some of them had mm -hmm. the X and the Y and separate on different parts of the equation, mm -hmm. so I guess I just need to make sure I line them all up. Yes, make so sure it's in this form. Right, make sure it's in this form before you try to do elimination or addition Correct. method, whatever you choose to call it, and you should be fine after that. And remember that the whole goal is to make sure that before you cross it out, they have to share the same value but opposite signs. You see how this was a positive 2 and this was a negative 2? That allowed for our x's to cancel out. We could have also done it with the y's. In this case, our y's are not matching. But if we wanted them to, what number would we want them to be? This is a positive 3 and a negative 2. We would have to multiply something to both equations. Like a fraction? Not necessarily. A number that they can both go into, like 6. If I wanted this to be a 6, I would have to end up multiplying this by 2 and this by 3. There will be some, in this case, we just had it where our x's were able to cancel out, but there will be other questions in this section where you might have to manipulate the equation a little bit more. But if you have any questions, you can always come back and ask me. I know this one didn't demand it, but if you did have um, a question with one of those, be sure to come back and let me know, and I'll help. I'll walk you through it. Hey, Stephanie, are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here, Nelson. What's up? Hey, I'm now in section 2.4, and it's a solving a system of linear equations by substitution now. All right, perfect. So substitution. Um, yeah, and all the questions look very similar to one another, uh, so I just really need help with number one. Perfect. So go ahead and uh, read me. I, they should have given you two equations. Mm -hmm. Yep, it looks similar from before. Um, yeah. <laughs> the first equation is x plus y equals negative 30. Okay. And then the second one is, it's weird because it just says y equals 4x. Okay. Awesome. So, for substitution, what you want to keep in mind is the word substitution. Substitution means plugging in something you already know. So you want to find y equals or x equals for one of your equations. I'll label this equation 1 and equation 2. Do we have either x equals or y equals for equation 1 or equation 2? Um, is... Like just y equals. Just the y equals, yeah. Right. So you see how two is like that? Y equals four mm -hmm. x. That's exactly mm -hmm. what we're looking for. So it so, doesn't really matter if it was x equals. It or could y have equals been x equals. equals, right? Either or, but you want to find it with a coefficient of just one. Okay. So you see how this just has a one in the front? Oh, okay. Yes. That's that's very very key. That will make substitution a lot easier for you. So 
if we rearrange it, if we had to rearrange it, rearrange it where you have where you isolate x or y and get it to one side of the equation. Because equation two is already set up for us like that, all we have to do is plug it in. So what we're going to end up plugging in is if they give us this as an identity, almost, you want to think about it, uh -huh. y equals 4x, they're telling us that y is equivalent to 4x, and we can substitute that in for the y in the first equation. So if I were to rewrite this, I'm going to rewrite the first equation, x plus, instead of y, I'm going to type in 4x equals negative 30. Negative 30. Right? So you see how in, instead of writing y, I substitute it for 4x because my second equation told me that y is equal to 4x. So I can make that substitution. Now. So, uh -huh. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, and the whole reason we're doing this is because I can't solve a system with two variables. I know only how to solve it with one variable, or at least that's what we know so far. So when they give us this, we're able to substitute it. And you see how now we only have an equation with only one variable, only x's, mm. I can combine those now. x plus 4x is 5x, 5x, right? Equals negative 30. Negative and if, 30. I'm, if I were to solve for x, I would divide by 5 to both sides. Divide both sides. Mm -hmm. And you're left with x equals mm -hmm. uh, negative 6. Yeah. Yes, negative 6. And remember, what you want to have is a value for x and a value for y. Once yeah, you it's have a coordinate system, it looks like it's a coordinate that I need to enter it in. It is. It is a coordinate. It should be your answer for for these will be ordered pairs because what we're doing mathematically is we're finding the intersection where these two equations, if we were to graph them, they will cross at one point in the graph. And so, that's the solution. And that's, that's the solution. what. Exactly. Oh, okay, that's what the professor is saying that the intersections are solutions, and yes. that's what we're doing right now. Okay. Exactly. This, so this x is the x value of the ordered pair. So you're halfway done with the answer because we have the x value, but we still need the y value. So when we're looking for our y value, you can take this x and plug it into equation one or equation two, whichever one you want. Which do you feel like doing? This is, let's do equation two because it seems easier. Yeah, it is easier, actually. Good job, because you see how it already says y equals? So if you plug that in, it, it'll all already give you your y without moving anything too much. So y equals 4 times negative 6. Are you able to still see what I'm writing? Yep. Okay, perfect. So you see how I plugged in this x for negative 6? Mm -hmm. Now all I do is simplify. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Negative 24. And we're done with that one. This will oh, wow. be... So why is, why is a big number negative 24? Okay. It can be, yeah. You can have big numbers or small numbers. But now our final answer then would be... Actually, let me do this in here. An ordered pair, negative 6, negative 24. Right? Because this is our x value and this is our y value. So this is the ordered pair that they're looking for. If you're able to see that. Are you able to see that down here? Possibly. Did I accidentally mute myself? No, I didn't. <laughs> I'm assuming you can see it. But yes, just make sure to write your answer as an ordered pair, and that should be substitution for you in a nutshell. All right. That makes sense. All right, cool. Did you have any further questions about this problem or any other? No. Um, I I kind of wanted to work ahead a little bit and go to the next section. Okay, yeah, uh, sure. 2.5. I also want to do the first problem in that section. Okay, perfect. So I'll go ahead and erase this. And then 2.5, I believe, is graphing? Yeah, there's graphs okay. already here. It says graphing linear inequalities and systems of linear inequalities. Oh, okay. Awesome. I like that you're working ahead, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I just want to make sure I get this done tonight. Yeah, perfect. Let me see. So it says, um, graph the line of, and then it gives me an inequality, uh, and then answer whether it is shaded above or below. 
Okay. And there's a hint here. It says make sure to extend the line all the way from one side of the ground to the other. I, I guess that's for shading. Yes. So that's 2.5. And can you go ahead and repeat the question one more time for me? So it says graph the line of, and it says negative 3x minus 2y um, is uh, less than or equal to negative 4. Did it look like this, less than or equal to? Yeah. yeah. Okay, then that is less than or equal to. <laughs> okay. All right, sorry. All right. No, it's all good. You did it perfectly fine. So what we're going to do here is we want to first make sure we have our equations set to y. This equals can be the inequality. It can be less than or greater than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, uh, less than or greater than. Mm -hmm. And then mx plus b. So b basically everything else. Your m, remember, is your slope, and your b is your y-intercept. Right. Uh -huh. And then x is all that. But the main point is to isolate y. This y right here. So this y. You want to get it all alone. So if I were to do that, what would you want to move over first? The negative 4, uh -huh. the 3x? Let's take the 3x and put it on the other side. Perfect. That's exactly what we're, what we're going to do. So negative 2y is less than or equal to negative 4 plus 3x. So we added 3x to both sides. So I'll go ahead and write that here. Oh. Are you okay with following along how we went from here to here? Yeah. Yes. Okay, then. Yes. And I, I don't change the sign or anything like that, right? No, we only change the sign if you're talking, if you mean this sign, not this sign. Yeah. 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 The inequality. We change the inequality. We flip it when we either multiply or divide by a negative number. Okay, that's in my notes. Okay, that yes. makes sense. Okay. We're almost there too, because you see how we are really close to isolating this y, but we're multiplying by a negative two. Uh -huh. So in order to isolate it, we need to divide by oh, negative two. Divide by negative two. Yes. Okay. So okay. if we divide so by negative two, we do that to everything. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> I know, it looks a little bit scary, but negative 2 divided by negative 2, in order to keep this mathematically correct, we need to do it to every term in the equation. So negative 2y divided by negative 2, negative 4 divided by negative 2, and 3x divided by negative 2. And then after, we simplify. So the negative 2s cancel out. This will be left with just y. Because we divided by a negative number, we're going to flip the sign, so it's going to be greater than or equal to, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is just positive 2. And then 3 divided by negative 2, you can leave it as a fraction. So plus, you could do plus negative 3 over 2 or 3 over negative 2. When you have a negative either at the denominator or in your numerator, you can take it out. So this can be like a minus 3 over 2. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, yeah, okay. so the whole thing is negative. The whole thing would be negative, yep. And then x is just outside. If x is in the numerator, you can bring it out in the front like that. So right. are you okay with how we got here? Yes. Okay, perfect. But the, but the x is in the wrong spot, so do I need it to move can, it over? Yeah, it depends on what you feel more comfortable. If you choose to see, if you if you want to, you can move it to the front. So you can have it y greater than or equal to negative 3 over 2x plus 2. As long as you keep the signs the same, if this is a positive 2 and this is a negative 3 over 2x, you can f switch the order that they're in. Okay. You can leave it like this, or you can rearrange it to have it like this. Yeah, Whatever. I like it like that better because it looks like yeah. a, a, the linear, uh, the y equals. Yes, yes it does. Okay, yeah, perfect. That's perfectly fine. Once we have the equation, we can now graph it. So when we're graphing it, we just, uh, are you able to see the graph that I just drew? I did, I do. Okay, this will be our x axis, this will be our y axis. And when I'm graphing it, 
I want to be able to see what my slope is. So the this value right here, this is my slope, right? My M is my slope. And my B value, which is my Y intercept. Remember my B value is my Y intercept. Yeah. I remember so, when we were graphing that, yeah. Yes. So when we we're starting to graph it, when we look at our equation, I'm actually even going to box this because it's a very important equation. You cannot graph it without getting this equation. So gotcha. is I, it is it do I graph it the same way that I would graph like when back when we were doing it normally with the yes. y equals mx is b? Yes, you start with the y intercept. So plus 2, so we go up 2 units. So if this is 2, this will be my first point. And then you apply your slope, negative 3 over 2. And Remember, that's why it's overrun. That's right. And it's negative, so it's going to go slanty. Yes. So it's, yeah, so it's going to go downwards, right? Gotcha. So, so then if it's negative. Okay. Th and you can assign this negative to either the 3 or the 2, and your other value would be positive. So if you wanted this to be a negative 3, then this is going to be a positive 2. You can also have it where this is a positive 3 and this is a negative 2. You'll still get the same slope. So I'll do negative 3. So if I start here, I'm going to go down 1, 2, one, three. Two, 3. And then I'm going to go over 2 to the two, right because it's going to be a positive one, 2. Two. Right. It's going to be positive 2 because I decided to keep the 3 negative. If right. I also wanted to have the negative 2 here and this be positive, I mean the same thing. If it was a positive three, one, two, one, three, two, three, and then my negative two would be negative, so one, two. To the left. You see how it's still going to be the same line? Same line, yeah. Okay. Make sense, so? All right. Cool, yeah. Yeah, I, and this is an inequality, so you also had shading, right? I have shading. The graph is shaded, and then it says below or above the line. How do I select which one is which? That depends on the inequality. The, when you're looking at the inequalities, there's actually two things you want to be able to identify, and that's going to be what type of line it is and what type of shade it is. So when we're determining what type of line it is, it can be a solid or a dashed line. So can you see this below? Yes. Okay. So when determining the type of line, both less than or equal to and greater than or equal to is going to be solid. A solid line simply means that it's going to be solid just the way I drew it already. So you see how this is just all solid? Your other yeah. option is that it could be a dashed line. That's with less than or greater than. So without the bar underneath, you almost want to think of this solid bar as like, oh, it should be a solid line. <laughs> mm, okay, that's an easy way to remember. Yep. And then if it doesn't have the line underneath, then it's going to be a dashed line. Dashed, dashed lines just look like this. So in this case, it's going to be a solid line because which we is, have a less than or equal right. to, which is what you drew so far. Well, we have a greater than or equal to. Remember, we flipped it in our calculation. This is less than or equal to. This is greater than or equal to. Right? <laughs> oh, no. I think you cut off again. Come back. I, I'm almost afraid to keep writing down here. I don't know if you can see this. But now we're going to determine what type of shade it is. And when we determine the type of shade, that's going to be less than or equal to or great or just regular less than is going to be shade below. So shade below the line. They do it below the line? or Yeah, so less than or equal to and less than is shade below. And then greater than or equal to, welcome back, by the way, is shade above. So are we going to be shading above or below the line? I think you're doing above it. Yes, above the line. If I were to do this on here, above the line would be, you see where I drew my line? It's going to be yeah. all above the line is where I'm going to shade. Okay. So that's how it will look graphically. Okay, cool. Excellent. That's That makes so much sense. Awesome. I, it really does. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you again for coming to the session. All right, got to go do homework. Talk okay. to you later. Bye.
All right. Bye-bye.